This is the not the G thirty five or the G thirty seven because G's are way out. This is I the forgot Q. about G. G this is was Q fifty. There. Yes. What happened with the G's is now the Q's. This is the Q fifty Red Sport four hundred, which means it has four hundred horsepower, which is fantastic actually. That's great. Just in case you forgot the horsepower, they wrote it on the back. It's four hundred horsepower. The number is yeah. there, right in the name. You're watching Everyday Driver. We make a TV show, podcast, and YouTube channels dedicated to great cars, driving adventures, and helping you find a car you'll love. Subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a thing. Okay, so let's talk about horsepower. This is probably one of the better, if not the best, engine that Nissan builds. All right, the GTR. I'll give you the GTR yeah. engine. But 400 horsepower, which is amazing, twin turbos. Mm -hmm. And Nissan tells us that the only difference between this and the 300 horsepower version are engine mounts and the optical sensor that runs the turbochargers. <laughs> so it gives you 100 more horsepower, mm -hmm. but that allows the turbos to spin at 240,000 RPM, which Infinity Nissan says is yes. the mostest, bestest, whatever. Well, but, but Great. Nissan, Nissan has a it long makes power. history. Big time. Nissan Great. has a long history of twin turbo V6s. Back to the 90s, mm -hmm. they were doing that mm -hmm. really, really well. This is the continuation of that. 400 horsepower. I do find it funny. I'm right there with you. It's the same engine. 300 or 400 horsepower. Three, just yeah. the, the only difference is tiny. The dials. Just, it's crazy. That's dials really up. it. This is $60,000 brand new. Yes, it is. They're yes. still building them to your point. Yes. No. No, not at $60,000. No. There's too many other cars that will do things better, a lot of things okay. better. And right. We'll have right. a list for you here shortly, but okay. the list of things that don't meet our driving standards. Now, if car manufacturers just built what we wanted, they just build Elise's and Cayman's all day long. That's yes. pretty much what they build. They we, have to we, sell cars. There'd be a dearth of minivans and SUVs, and that's it. all anybody wants to buy anymore. They yeah, need to sell cars. Sure. Yeah. But this is the only sedan Infinity builds. And if you're looking for something hot with this awesome, powerful engine that you can hunt Maserati Ghibli's with and win. <laughs> yes, you can, for sure. You need to look at the Red Sport. The problem is, I feel like the engine is really the only thing you, you get. I do think it's actually great That's, looking. I think this is a design that when I first saw it on the show stand, I thought, I don't know. And then when I first saw it in the wild, I thought, you know what? Both the Q50 and the Q60 are great looking in the real world yes. driving down the road. Yes. They are excellent looking and I think I stand by that. I do like it in this red color. I think I'm with you though. The engine is the crown jewel of this setup. It's and it honey. is it is better than just about anything else in this class. That 400 horsepower number looms large. In this yeah. world of, you know, 700 horsepower cars from Dodge, okay, that you can buy with a warranty. <laughs> in, this, in this world, or the 1,000 horsepower Tesla, or wherever you want to go, right. in that world, 400 horsepower almost seems quaint, but I want to oh say, honest, seriously, How but cute. I want to say, this may 400. be, yeah, look at you with your 400, good for you, but good honestly, you. maybe one day you'll grow up. This honestly feels wow. like one of the more powerful 400 horsepower numbers I've ever driven. It feels excellent yeah. with power. Yeah, it does. It's just, it moves. Everything around that isn't quite what it should be, especially at $60,000. Red Sport 400, that means this is a performance car. This is their performance car. We keep thinking, oh yeah. There's zero the apologies. The Red Sport 400, why don't we think of that car the, ever? The, and and right. Infinity sets it up as yes. this is the sportiest, best driver's car version of anything we yeah. make. When you bring that expectation, we bring expectations along with it. That's, That's the a problem. Good point. We haven't stepped into this and gone, well, it's the mid grade, and so, you and know, it's not quite up to sporting standards. Or or, something. Okay. You know, yeah. Why isn't this a sporty yeah. car? It's yeah. in the name, it's in the, the marketing materials. This is set up as Infinity does yeah. sports sedan at its highest level. That's why we gave it 400 horsepower. That's what the setup. So they introduced, gosh, long ago, 2014, 2015, somewhere around there. <laughs> yeah, forever Something ago, yeah. called Steer by Wire, mm -hmm. which everybody thought, oh, okay, we hope it's good. Hope it works out for you. Because up to this point, you've probably noticed no other car manufacturer has also said, what a great idea. We're going to do that too. <laughs> Nobody else mm -hmm. has. Infinity is standing alone in that. And in this Red Sport 400, you have the option. You can get the electronic 
power assist steering. Yes. Sort of their baseline steering. Yes. You can also opt for this dynamic active steering, the mm -hmm. steer by wire, mm -hmm. which is fine if it feels good and it works well. I'm coming away kind of shocked that I, I don't like it at all. I'm not mm -hmm. feeling any fun. I'm not mm -hmm. feeling any information because in addition to that just regular steering, the Q50 has something called active trace control which essentially the car uses braking and torque vectoring yes. to help you around the corner. Yes. Add to that all-wheel drive, a very uneven road, mm -hmm. a lot of power, and things get hairy. You, you, yes. They get a little yes. scary, actually. And so that's why I say, as a used car, you're looking for an awesome engine screwed mm -hmm. to a eh, kind of car? Maybe. If you get this for half price, I'd recommend it. The problem at 30 grand or 30 grand ish is the fact that we have the like the Genesis G70 in the mid 30s. Yeah. That's a rear wheel drive that's a problem. performance sedan. Yeah, that's I mean granted that's not the super hottest version of that, but that one rotates well and is interesting to drive. to position this as the the pinnacle of sports sedan from infinity and then not have it feel sporty yeah i, it, I mean it's it, fast which yes, is kind it, of a sporty it, feel yes, it's plenty fast. it can go fast yes, through corners yes. i'm not saying it can't you just lose all your confidence going through well and, and, but honestly to your point though i why aren't we comparing this to things like the m3 and the amgs because that honestly this is the closest equivalent from infinity it is. And that's it really is. problematic. Now, yeah. those are going to be another 10 to 20 grand more than this. But the problem is that that 60 grand figure, when you say, this is all we do, that, that sets a yeah. bar instantly yeah. of performance that we expect it to meet. This is infinity going, this is, for all intents and purposes, our M equivalent. At the top end, this is supposed to be the thing. Yeah. Infinity, as a tech company, they are actually the closest car company that I can find up to this point mm -hmm. that is taking Formula One technology and dumping it in their cars. They have taken, with their Project Black S, the Formula One curse system and put it in a car, mm -hmm. in the Q60 Project Black S. Great! Let's take more parts off F1 cars and <laughs> stick them in road cars. There, there are revisions going on in this interior. Now, you'll notice this center stack, honestly, has kind of been here since the G-Series in the early 2000s. The way this is arranged... I thought you were going to say Stone Age, but we'll go with G-Series. <laughs> since the G-Series. But what's interesting is, instead of remaking this or rethinking this, there's cost savings and amortization. Let's just go with that here. By <laughs> not, they, they, by just they did a double stack of screens. Uh -huh. they, every, as everybody went to touch screens, they just looked at the same center stack they've used forever, and they figured out how do we get enough here? Well, we we'll add a d different screen below the stand because this upper screen's been here for at least a decade. Sure. Now we've yeah. got a lower screen. I mean, they're milking this as far as they can. <laughs> and as a, look, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, that stuff's in here, but it's interesting to watch how they are essentially retrofitting an interior that's been around a long time. Even though they've updated it with a newer looking steering wheel design and the fit and finish is decent. Mm -hmm. It's a it's lot solid. like many cars, mm -hmm. which is fine. But you again, you can't just sit down and think, wow, the materials, what a great car. I just, I love sitting here. You, you've got to drive it before you think that. Yeah, I want to drive it. Yeah, you about. need to drive it. Okay, so are you in Sport Plus then? Are we in Sport uh, Plus? I think so. I okay. haven't changed anything from where you had it. So there's different modes of driving, which is fine. I like the modes because I like when there's a... Sporty Plus. Okay, Sport Plus. There's changes to the car depending on what you want. And, you know, the cars that actually change personality in a dramatic way, those are interesting. They're fun to For drive. Sure. Yeah, yeah. They actually kind of lean towards more all-in-one kinds of cars, do it all kinds of cars. So this has suspension called dynamic digital suspension. There's a lot of digital going on on the, on the build There's sheet of this car. There's a lot yeah. of electronics going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is fine, and it does change, and it does stiffen up the ride. And actually, in some corners, you're going, okay, I held on more than I thought. The all-wheel drive, good. it yanks you through. Yes. Excellent. I just think, for $60,000, really? Well, but Infinity's at a tough place because everything they make... Bye-bye. 400 horsepower. <laughs> 
How cute. And good riddance. How cute. Yeah, how cute. 400. Oh, 400 little horsepower. Good for you. <laughs> Boom. Seriously, it's like it's like smuggling a bomb everywhere. Nobody has any idea how powerful this thing is. It Honestly, really, it doesn't feel like 400. It's awesome. It, it feels like much more, and it's yeah. delivered wonderfully. I actually think the drivetrain, the seven-speed gearbox, the drivetrain, the way the chassis is set up, that adaptive suspension, all of that is excellent. I yeah. actually think it's really good. And I think this car gets so close to being one of those cars that you and I would talk about on the podcast all the time as, folks, seriously, you have to go drive this you, car. You're missing oh, out. Wait, yeah. wait, 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 why yeah. haven't you tried an Infiniti uh, Red Sport 400 yet? We would do that, except for the steering. I just bought for our cheap sports car challenge a 2004 BMW Z4. Okay, that is right, first right. gen BMW electric steering. That is 16 year old electronic steering, first gen BMW electronic steering. And we raged at that point about how poor the information was on electronic steering. Which is to be and forgiven. First absolutely. generation, and old, it's come whatever, fine. a long way. And yet, yeah. I am in a 2020 from Infinity. The Z4 steering is better. And it's bad. Yeah. The Z4 electronic assist steering is actually more informative than this. And it isn't informative, by the way. The problem here is there is no change in the steering feel if you have a little bit dialed in or a lot dialed in or halfway dialed in. There's no information. You can drive along at 80 miles an hour on the freeway. You can wiggle the steering wheel almost an inch in either direction, and the wheels don't even listen. They don't even yeah. do anything. Here's the takeaway. Look, do I need this car to have granular steering feel? I really don't. No, and they it's, have a, it's a sports uh, sedan. customer base to sell to. They've got to, I, I get that. You know, find a sweet spot. But the problem with missing entirely is how much it takes away your confidence as a driver. Yes. How I much agree. it makes you go, wait, 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 I'm not really entirely sure what's going on. Or you find yourself yeah. faster in a corner with less grip than you expected, and you realize that in that kind of sensation at the back of your neck, like, <gasps> Which is way too late. Which is way, way too late. Yeah, because yeah. the car tells you nothing. It makes me wonder if you're a commuter in a Houston or a Florida or a place where it's long straights. Oh, I where, see. Where the I only see. time you hit a corner is your clover leaf the one time on your way to work. This is a fine now. Because you've got power nobody expects. You've got a car nobody sees. You've got... Hey, you can dial in your mode. Well, How aggressive really you want to be today? Though. It's comfortable. It's good seat great to be here. Nice I can see this to be a commuter, and yes, you've got a long road trip ahead of you. Yes, absolutely. Totally. You would Greatness. saw through states yeah. in this. So I think if you're in that situation where you're either what you're saying, like the long straight road trip down a freeway where everything's big sweepers and steering feels irrelevant because you're yeah. so on miles, yeah. or you're Houston, you're Dallas, you're Florida, where it's long straights on your city commute. I think you have a sleeper here. I think you have the car nobody sees coming. But you and I are taking it and looking at that sport setup and the way Infinity positions it, we want it to be a genuine sports sedan, which means rotation and it means steering feel, at least of some kind. Well, just and from it a doesn't have it. standpoint, yes. The confidence goes all away, which it's, means it gone. It's you're gone. not able to extract what you said the chassis and the engine can mm -hmm. deliver. Yep. You can't get that and still have a great car to go drive. It's sort of like, well, you still need a fun car even if you have this, even yeah. though the recipe is actually here. It is. But it's not giving it to you. It is. Infinity, I think, is still wondering what kind of company they want to be. I think so, too. And I think that conflicts against the products they want to offer and what some of the marketplace wants to buy versus what they think the future of Infinity can be. Mm. And I've touched on this before. I think they could so easily reinvent themselves completely as a full electric from sports cars to SUVs and people movers. They've talked about go it. all electric and do something entirely different mm -hmm. and reinvent themselves, reinvent the brand. So, Infinity tells us that that steer-by-wire system is forward-looking towards autonomy. Okay, okay. If that's the case, let's push ourselves there. Let's push Infinity there. Let's get there sooner. But hang on. You're, you're making a car for somebody to drive that's set up for them to not drive it. How completely conflicted is that thinking? Honestly, it's in line with the brand. And again, they're putting tech from F1 cars into road cars. Yeah. What other company thinks... Huh, what parts can we screw to our road cars? <laughs> We're in racing. What racing parts can we take off our race cars and just try out as a yeah. concept? Yeah. Who's doing this? I would love to see more of that. 
that's not what quite what we're finding here, mm -hmm. obviously. The rest of the car, from styling, interior, exterior, comfort, okay. This is... <laughs> I can't complain. I do like the styling. It looks good. Look at the rear haunches. That mm. S shape, that S reflection right in the middle. Well done. I like it. It's, it's, a, it's definitely a good looking it's car. It's going to continue to be a good looking car for yes. a long time. Yes. So maybe we found a geographic specific <laughs> car. Are you the commuter we're talking about? Because this may be a fine that nobody mm. has. People write to us and they go, this is the kind of commute I have. Corners don't matter. And I don't want something everybody has. That's this. Huh. Because the fuel economy is a little bit better than a V8. Yeah, it a little bit. It can do the straight line thing. Totally it can. You're in a sleeper and everybody loves sleepers. Nobody you're just, knows what this is. Show them your taillights. Boom. You you're gone. You are gone. gone. You're... There's so much here yeah. that's good. And that layer on the top of it of lack of engagement. And again, it's way yeah. beyond numb. It's just, it's it's asleep. It's disconnected. <laughs> And that is such a disappointment it's to a me. It's a sleeper, and by that we mean the car's asleep. Yeah. It's such a disappointment to me because there's so many <laughs> things to like here, yeah. and that just just kills it, and I, it makes me sad.